so as I mentioned yesterday, um, I, as of 2005, did not know my notes on the dulcimer, chords, or scales. I had no idea what any of it was. I was a complete, total, by ear uh, person. And you can get by with that, no problem, but communicating what you're doing to somebody else is difficult if you don't speak the language. And so I, st I started teaching myself music theory after that point. And to learn the, uh, uh, the fretboard, I learned that there are a number of things you can do as far as playing scales and then memorizing them. So I'm going to show you the scales here real quick. Basically, what you do is you play three scales, and those scales are D, G, and A. And so you use the tuning placement chart. We'll use the bottom one, D, A, D. And instead of having to try and memorize that stuff right off the bat, you start playing the scales. And again, I'll give you the tablature for it. Um, but you start off with D. And you say each note of the scale, D, E, F sharp, G. And you'll just look down on the paper. And you go as slow as you need to and say that. And if you do this every day, all the D scales, all the G scales, all the A scales, you'll actually name every single note in the first octave. And you do that once a day, and after about two weeks, your eyes will begin to cross, and you will think, this is the most boring thing in the world. I've been doing this for two weeks. I know this stuff. Oh, it sinks in, just staying with it every single day. And then it never leaves you. And it helps a lot when you're building chords and, and playing later on. So take a look at the four fretbox scales. And what we have here, this is basically a finger exercise. And we'll work through it as a finger exercise. To get you used to moving up and down the fretboard, you know, you'll develop your muscle memory for each area of the fretboard. The frets get closer and closer together as you get uh, towards the bridge. And so every area of the fretboard's got a certain distance you need to travel in order to be accurate. And so by using this um, exercise, you'll be training your muscle memory to know how to play accurately in every area of the mountain dulcimer. But this also serves another purpose, and that is to give you the uh, scales for D major, G major, and A major. Those are the three major scales that are available to us when we're playing in the key of D. We also have three minor scales. I want you to notice that those minor scales on this sheet also have a little parenthetical information regarding what type of minor they are. When people talk about the minor scale, they're talking about the natural minor scale. Neither of these, based on this sheet, are the natural minor. So you don't want to use these as a natural minor scale. They're Dorian minor and Phrygian minor. You don't have to know any of that right now. Just want to let you know that if you're going to use these for reference in other areas of your musical experience, that be aware that the minor scales on this page are not natural minors. They're not going to match up if someone says, I'm going to play a minor scale. You'll be playing something a bit different, and a couple of notes in these scales will not match the natural minor, just so you know. The reason they're on here is because the way we are running these scales, four notes on the bass string and four notes on the middle string, are just to get our fingers used to traveling up the bass and up the middle string uh, quickly, cleanly, and evenly. So let me show you what this trick is. Basically, it's playing all three of these scales in various locations on the fretboard. And while you're doing it, looking at your tuning placement chart and saying, the name of each of the notes as you go through. So the first one you're going to see there, well actually let's start with this one. The very obvious one is the, the uh, D major scale that we can play up the melody string. So ignoring the fact that I have a six, uh, a one and a half fret here, we'll be playing open, one, two, three, four, five, six and a half, and seven. The six and a half is very, very important because we're right next to the sixth fret and that's where we have a choice. We can either play that seventh note is C natural, or we can play that seventh note as C sharp. And for the D major scale, we want C sharp. So when you're playing, make sure you're hitting that C sharp, that six and a half fret, before you go to the final note at the seventh fret. So once again, it's open, one, two, three, four, five, six and a half, and seven. Let's go ahead and play the D major scale on the melody string and just play that string by itself, no drone involved. And I'll give us one, two, three, four. We'll play each of these notes as a quarter note. One, two, three, four.
right, good. Let's do the exact same thing on the bass string. Same frets. They'll be the same notes, but they'll be pitched down an octave. One, two, three, four. All right, good. Now, middle string. This is going to put us uh, with an A major scale. Since we're tuned to open A, we can use the exact same frets, and they'll give us the same intervals and give us the same correct spacing for the A major scale. Coming up the middle, it will be just like this. Let's go ahead and play the A major scale on the middle string. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. So we've done two D major scales on the bass string and on the melody string, and we've done an A major scale on the middle string. Now take a look at the first measure on the four fretbox scales page, and there you're going to see a different configuration. Instead of going up from the bottom of the instrument about to the middle of the instrument, we're going to play towards us from the bass string to the middle string in a box. If you can imagine an imaginary box around the four frets, or three frets rather, from the uh, nut to the third fret, we're going to play open one, two, three on the bass string then open one, two, three on the middle string like this. On measure one, let's go ahead and play D major scale. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Next, we're gonna move over to the fourth fret, uh, fourth measure, and there we have the G major scale. Again, we're doing this in a group of four frets on the bass string, and then a group of four frets on the middle string, starting with the third fret on the bass string. Let's play the G major scale. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. And then finally, moving to measure number five, we've got the A major scale. We're gonna start from the fourth fret on the bass string. Now, very careful, remember I talked about how in order to get the correct interval, we don't wanna use the sixth fret, we wanna use the six and a half fret, and that's gonna apply here as well. So we're gonna play a four, five, we're gonna skip over the sixth fret, play six and a half and seven, and then do the exact same thing on the middle string. Play four, five, skip the sixth fret, go to the six and a half, and then play the seven. So let's go ahead and play the A major scale from the fourth fret on the bass string. One, two, three, four. All right, good. So let's backtrack a little bit, and I want you to take, flip over the um, paper and take a look again at those, uh, the note placement. And you may have to flip back and forth. I was just trying to save a tree or two, otherwise I would have had these side by side. But again, if you have that note placement chart in front of you, the idea here is to take those scales that we just played and don't play through them with any sort of tempo. In fact, take your time looking at the note placement chart. You'll have it right here, maybe right here, and then have the uh, thing with the scales on it. And then go through these scales and say D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. And do it as slowly as you need to in order for you to understand that that's exactly what you're playing and that's its location on the fretboard. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. For A, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Then we've got these three strings that we just went up like this. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D on this side. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Up the middle string, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Just those three scales. If you do that going up the melody string, up the middle string, up the bass string, and measures one, four, and five. This way, this way, and this way. Say those notes. You will name every single note in the first octave using those three scales. You'll name every single note. Let me show you one more thing here, and this is one of the easiest secrets to putting uh, some groove into your music. In the Western world, we love 4-4 four, four time. We love square rhythms. 
And we love our very basic drum sets. Kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. So a lot of our rhythms that make us want to dance are based on this ta to ta to ta to ta to ta Specifically that snare, pop, pop, on the after beats. That beat beats two and four. So if I'm playing four strums, no accents, all the same volume, there's not much of a groove there. But if I put accents on two and four, making them a little bit louder, one, That's simulating kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. So I can go from playing Down the River I Go Uncle Joe with a flat, no accented rhythm. I'm trying to force myself to do that. Now I'm going to put accents on two and four, really big accents. I mean, you can't help but nod your head to that because it's got that solid, solid groove. So if you play with a little bit of a heavier accent on beats two and four, you know, or just beat two if you're playing two, four time. It's going to give you that rhythmic groove and that'll make everything sound good. I tell you what, if one thing can make boiled in cabbage sound good, it's putting some groove to it. You know, you could go. Mm -hmm. 